Did you ever watch the 1974 TV series based on the Planet of the Apes movies? This show, which came after the popular movies, took its audience into a world where apes were in charge and humans had less power. It mixed adventure, mystery, and deep themes, and it really stood out in TV history. What makes this show so memorable are the parts that stick with us even after the show ends. Is there a specific scene or moment from the series that you remember clearly? Whether it's from the first time you saw it or a particular scene that really hit home, this show has a way of staying in our minds. We're curious to hear about your favorite memories of this series. What personal experiences do you remember when you think of Planet of the Apes? Your stories bring the show to life years after it was on air. Share them in the comments from the funny and surprising to the sad moments. Every memory adds to the story of this classic series. Get ready to go on a trip down memory lane with us as we look back at the exciting world of Planet of the Apes and the lasting effect it had on its viewers. Stay tuned for an adventure like never before and don't forget to share your stories. The television series Planet of the Apes, despite its strong connection to the popular film franchise, faced a surprising struggle in gaining traction in the United States, a contrast to its more favorable reception in the United Kingdom and Australia. This outcome is intriguing, especially considering the film's lasting appeal. The series itself presents a range of strengths, from its well-crafted characters to its engaging title sequence and high-quality music and scripts. The photography in several episodes stands out as particularly noteworthy. One possible reason for the show's limited success in the United States could be its low-key tone and approach, which might have made it less noticeable in TV schedules at the time. An interesting aspect for fans is the mystery surrounding the identity of the actor who portrayed the character Jonesy in the first episode, a detail that remains unresolved. Comparing this series to other science fiction television shows from the same era, such as those produced by Irwin Allen and Star Trek, it appears somewhat subdued. This quality, while making it unique, might have contributed to its lesser impact compared to these more dynamic series. Often compared to Quinn Martin's The Fugitive from the 1960s, it lacks the same level of engagement found in that classic series. For fans of actor Roddy McDowell seeking his performances in a science fiction setting, The Fantastic Journey is a recommended alternative. In summary, while the series boasts several commendable aspects like its strong characters and technical prowess, its subtler approach and tone might have hindered its widespread popularity, especially in the United States. Nevertheless, it holds a special place in the genre for its unique take on the well-known planet of the apes narrative. In an effort to boost viewer interest, producers of the TV series considered a significant shift in its storyline. They contemplated returning to the timeline established in the original films, potentially reintroducing popular characters Cornelius and Zira. This idea, however, remained unrealized, leaving fans to wonder how this change might have altered the series' trajectory. Kim Hunter, known for her role as Zira in the film series, faced an invitation to guest star in the TV adaptation. Despite this opportunity, she declined, primarily due to the demanding process involved in applying the chimp makeup, a task she no longer wished to endure. The casting of Galen presented an unexpected turn. Roddy McDowell, a natural choice for the role given his previous performances in the franchise, found himself in a peculiar position. Surprisingly, the producers did not initially consider him interested in the part. To secure the role, McDowell had to actively express his desire to play Galen, competing against other actors who were auditioning for the same part. These behind-the-scenes decisions and occurrences add depth to our understanding of the series. They highlight the challenges and uncertainties in maintaining continuity with a beloved film series, as well as the complexities involved in casting decisions for television adaptations of popular films. These elements contribute to the broader narrative of the show's production and legacy. In the television adaptation of the well-known science fiction story, James Franciscus, notable for his role as Brent in the second film of the franchise, was approached to play Alan Verdon. However, he declined the offer. This decision led to the casting of another actor for this pivotal role, shaping the series differently than initially envisioned by its creators. The show's struggle to maintain a robust viewership prompted the producers to seek new strategies. In a significant move, they brought in Gene Roddenberry, celebrated for his work on Star Trek, to serve as a consultant. His involvement was seen as a potential turning point for the series. 
Unfortunately, the show was canceled before Roddenberry's influence could be seen, leaving many to speculate on what direction he might have steered the storyline. Despite its cancellation in the United States, after a brief 14-week run, the series found a considerable audience in the United Kingdom. Its success across the Atlantic was a stark contrast to its reception at home. This transatlantic difference in popularity highlights the varied tastes of television audiences and the unpredictable nature of TV show success. These facts offer further insight into the series' production and reception, illustrating the challenges faced in adapting a popular film franchise to television, as well as the complexities of television viewership and international appeal. The series remains a notable example of how television adaptations can diverge in success and reception from their film counterparts. The television show based on the Planet of the Apes universe began in an unconventional manner for its time. In the 1970s, it was common for dramatic or adventure series to start with a TV movie pilot. This initial step provided audiences a taste of the show and helped build interest. However, the show's producers took a different path. They launched directly into the series, bypassing the usual pilot movie. This decision was likely influenced by financial considerations, as producing a pilot movie involves significant costs. Despite the franchise's widespread appeal and the inclusion of Roddy McDowell, a key actor from the original film series, the show has not been made available on streaming platforms as of 2021. This absence is notable, especially since Disney, having acquired 20th Century Fox, holds the rights. Fans have expressed disappointment over its absence on Disney+, Plus, which houses a vast collection of other titles. In the promotional phase before the show's premiere, CBS employed an unusual strategy. Instead of showcasing clips from the series itself, they used footage from Beneath the Planet of the Apes, a film in the franchise. This approach likely aimed to capitalize on the film's popularity to generate interest in the show. However, it might have also set different expectations among the audience as the series' content and tone differed from that of the movies. These aspects of the show's production and marketing highlight the challenges and unique strategies involved in transitioning a popular film narrative to a television format. The series stands as a testament to the dynamic nature of television production and the various factors that influence a show's journey from conception to broadcast. Set in the year 3085, the series depicted a future where apes ruled and humans were subordinate. This setting provided a unique backdrop for the story, immersing viewers in a world far removed from their own. The use of the Forbidden City in the series is notable for its real-world origin. The decaying MGM backlot, used as the cityscape exteriors, added an authentic touch of ruin and age to the scenes. Despite its intended portrayal as a thousand-year-old ruin, some inconsistencies were evident, such as the presence of relatively undamaged wood and curtains. This choice of location also marked one of the last instances of utilizing this part of the MGM backlot in filmmaking. The show's presence extended beyond television screens through a series of paperbacks. During its airing, three books were released, each based on two episodes. These books, titled Man the Fugitive, Escape to Tomorrow, and Journey into Terror, expanded the narrative for avid fans. Interestingly, the pilot episode was not included in these adaptations. Later, in 1976, a fourth novel, Lord of the Apes, was published, further enriching the series' literary landscape. These aspects of the series, from its futuristic setting to the incorporation of real-world elements and expansion into literature, demonstrate the depth and breadth of its creative execution. The show's unique blend of storytelling, set design, and cross-media expansion contributed to its distinctive place in television history.